feedback. So just give us a minute. You can. Oh, there's one thing we forgot to do. Uh, we'd like you to sit with people who are in front of your institute, if that's possible. So, <laughs> so while Diego's setting this up, while Diego's setting this up, you can all just get up and find another table to sit at. You don't want to be talking to the people you talk to every day. Okay? So rearrange yourselves, please. And there she is. <laughs> Um, and this was in Colombia, as you say. Um, there's this rumor going around that CTs don't know what pair work is, and it's very difficult to get uh, CTs to do pair work because they're not used to it. I think it's uh, a rumor because it'd be perfectly possible to carry out, and I have evidence for it. Uh, this is a RT trying it out for the first time, and. Um, you can see that it's starting to work. Yeah, this was the first lesson that she's done. Trying to okay. But in other lessons, this was in Antigas uh, 55. I mean, take a look at that. That's pair work. It works. <laughs> the kids are talking to each other. Peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Uh, the CT is there coordinating. And there's so many lessons I've observed where I see volunteers come to the front of the class talk to the camera, and the rest of the students are doing nothing. And uh, we have to try to move away from that and get the students to be active and and, and, okay. and pair work is one way. More pair work, okay? Um, I see some of you have been posting pictures on Facebook, beautiful pictures like this, um, students showing their homework, which they like to do. Um, this is from Daniela. Is Daniela here? No, she's not. She's from America. Uh, and this is from Mariela. Is Mariela here? This is another example of uh, students showing off their work. It's very nice to see. Uh, I know some of you have 100, 200, 500, even 700 <laughs> students. <laughs> How many people have 500 students or more? 400 students or more? 300 students or more? Okay. And I know it's difficult to remember the names of all those students. And one way, one simple solution is just to ask the CT to get the, the learners to, to write their names on, on a piece of paper and have it there during the class. Because it makes such a difference when you're talking to the students to address them by name uh, and to address the teacher. Uh, board work. Uh, this is remote teaching, but there's always room for some board work. The other day, this RT uh, didn't have access to didn't, he couldn't project his computer onto the screen. And instead of panicking, he just went to the board, he had the slide in his mind, and he just wrote it out of the board. And it worked wonderfully. Um, so it's good to have that resource. This is Jay from SME. Um, <laughs> this is just beautiful to see. I think for remote, the more remote you are as a teacher, the more distant you can feel psychologically from from the context. I think it's easier for Argentinians to understand the whole football thing. Um, but for the SME teachers in the Philippines, it, it, was, uh, it was so exciting to, to be part of the whole football the World Cup. And, and you can see how genuine their support is. And I think that's, that's very important for the remote teachers to feel like they're connected in some way to the local context. Um, I've seen some really great teamwork um, really great chemistry between the remote teachers and, and the classroom teachers, and that is the linchpin. If you don't have that, then it's very difficult to, to, to get everything else off the ground. So that's something we all have to work on. Um, I'm just going to share some pictures with you. Elsa and Jika. Patricia and Romeo. <laughs> this is Daniela and Celeste. And her name is actually Celeste. <laughs> And of course, our mentors, without whom it would be very difficult to get any of the, of the work done on the ground, because there's so many things that need to be, to be looked after, and sometimes the classroom teachers feel a bit um, abandoned or lost, or <laughs> and that's where the mentors play such a, a crucial role. Um, so it's, it's really, as Hannah was saying um, in the beginning of our, our day, that it's, it's a project with so many different aspects to it. So many things have to go well and so many people have to contribute to the work. And uh, I'm just 
thrilled to be able to play some small part in that. Um, I also like what I've seen, and this is also on Facebook. Andres Franca, is he here? He's coming. He's coming, okay. Um, posting pictures of the students. Uh, you know, uh, it's really nice. The, the pair work, I mean, the um, project work is evidence of, of good things going on in the B and C lessons. But I also think that project work can be used during evaluation lessons. Instead of having the students come to the front and do the evaluation and the rest of the class just sitting around waiting, have them work on the project or some kind of project. Um, so this is also this uh, the CTs are on Facebook, um, and I just want to share this with you because this is a CT who Melissa Melissa Navarro and yeah, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> Melissa and I came, came to this beautiful school where there was so much um, going on. And when you walked into the school, there was a gym class going on in the hall. And, uh, and their room, where they have the classes, actually has air conditioning because the parents in the school chipped in money to pay for the air conditioning just for save out and live. So there's a lot of enthusiasm for, for the program uh, from the parents, too. Uh, that's why it's so important to make sure that things work and that we don't you know, let, let them down. Um, this is a teacher who gets along splendidly with, with the R team. And uh, I just love the comment he put there on Facebook. Uh, en el juego de la escuela número 60, el reglo de la clase de inglés con aires, cada vez aprendemos más. María Julia, ¿está aquí? Ha estado en los blogs antes de que tuvimos el CREA set up properly, pero nos gustaría ver más de esto en el CREA system. Uh, examples of student work, um, and this you can see these lovely pictures, and 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 the uh, <coughs> personalized kind of language. Um, and this is something that RTs can do, I think. Talk to the CTs and get them to, to make the rooms look a little more like an English class. I know not every school has a room solely for English, uh, but some of them do, and. It's really nice to see, this is actually on a wall in one of the rooms. I think it's nice when the kids walk into the class to feel like they're in English class, not just um, a bare kind of sterile environment. Yeah. Um, institute directors, coordinators, are any of you here? Okay, this is something that uh, the coordinator in the Philippines is doing. I think it's just a great idea. Um, I've observed about 30 lessons of SME RTs in the last month or so. And I've been sending feedback to back to the coordinator. And the coordinator has been putting all of these ideas of good practice to spread around and ideas for not so good practice to think about in the staff room. And, and it becomes a topic of conversation. Uh, and it, I think it's a great way to, to improve the quality of the, of the program. Um, That's just an idea for you, institute directors out there. Okay, today's presentation, I had to talk a little bit about them. Um, this is something I think that is, that's important. Um, how do you, it's a contradiction, it's a paradox. We don't want teacher centered lessons, right? But at the same time, you want somebody who knows how to speak in front of the camera, which is not the same as speaking in the classroom. So um, there's a quote here that I liked. <coughs> There's the link. By the way, you can get this presentation through a QR code, which I'm going to give you at the end of the presentation. Um, and this is exactly what um, Charity is going to talk to us about today. How how can you how can you dramatize a little bit your presence so so to engage the learners um, and pass that on to them. And Diego's going to talk about teaching with technology. I don't know how many of you have seen my post on Facebook, but this, to me, this says it all. This one picture here, you can find 10 things that are going well in an adolescent. Um, you have individualized attention. You have a kid who's showing his homework to the CT, to the RT. The CT is actively involved in the lesson. The other kids have been given a task because they're not sitting around with their heads on their hands. Uh, The 
RT has established the presence in the lesson, but not the focal point of the lesson. And I've gotten some feedback from you, yes, but the CTs don't use their XOs, they never bring them to pass, half of them are broken. Diego Cortinas is gonna tell us ways to deal with that situation. I know it's not possible in every lesson, I'm aware of that, but I think it is possible in more lessons than we're seeing it being done. Uh, if you have your cell phones and the scanner, you can...